Welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Hardy. And tonight, we have a very special guest. This basketball head is a Cardinal Hayes standout who played on the same team with New York City legend, Jamal Masburn. He also made a name for himself playing against some of the best ball players in New York City. After figuring out there's more to life than basketball, he turned his focus to music. This basketball head became one of the more popular DJs in New York City, holding it down every Friday on Greensboro, New York. Excuse me, that's Greenboro, North Carolina radio station, 105.1 Live. Help me welcome to the show, Cardinal Hayes standout, Mark Jackson, better known to the world as DJ Mighty Mark. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Yes. yes. You have you just have now into the, into the, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Tickets because the game about to start. All right, all right, all right. What's happening, my brother? What's going on, bro? What's going on? What's going on with you, Glenn? How's everything, man? Oh, man, I'm blessed and highly favored, man. Can't complain. Absolutely. Same here, same here, same here. Um, first off, I want to just say, you know, this is this is more than an honor to be on your to be on your show, to be on your platform, man. And I just I salute you. I love what you're doing. And it's it's a fantastic thing. It's it's definitely giving back to the to the world of New York City. Well, you know, yeah, the world. I might as well say that the world of New York. Yeah, City. yeah, because th th this going out to the world, bro. Yeah, and and um, the amazing players that came out of our city. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and when I found out, you know, you was one of them because I like hearing it from other guys. They just give that validation, right? Exactly. Because People don't brag or talk about people who ain't really do their thing. No matter how big, right? Absolutely. If you impacted somebody's life in New York City, trust me, you deserve to be up here and tell your story. You know what? When you when when you reached out to me, well, yeah, when we spoke and you told me that, I was really, you know, I'm one of the most, you know, I'm one of the most humble guys you ever want to meet. You know what I'm saying? On any on any level. You know what I'm saying? And anybody that knows me well knows that. You know what I'm saying? So when you told me, when you re when we when we spoke and you said that several guys were saying, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mark was, you know what I mean? He had game and things of that nature. You know, I was, you know, again, I was very humbled by that. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, uh, this is, you know, Again, this is a this is more than a pleasure to to be on this platform to be talking about um you know my earlier my earlier days in terms of balling and all that. Right. You know what I'm saying, Glenn? Like right. you know, like it, I mean, and actually, you know, I know I know our time is limited, but I you know, like I really got a story. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I might as well I might as well just go ahead and go get right into it right now. You know what I'm saying? All right. So let, let, let me start off by asking this. Who introduced you to the game, my brother? And this is, and I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to get into all of that right now. Okay, um, I started actually a, a good, good friend of mine by the name of Reggie Starr. You know what I'm saying, Reggie Starr from Manhattanville Projects in Harlem. You know what I'm saying. I'm originally, I'm originally from Harlem. You know what I'm saying. And yeah, my my friend Reggie Starr, who we also we also played together at Cardinal Hayes, you know what I'm saying? Um, he kind of introduced me to the game, you know, and uh, we used to play, uh, you know, awful lot in, uh, in, you know, at the, at the tender age of like six, seven, and eight and all of that. And we used to go to Stone Gym. I don't know if you, you familiar with Stone Gym, 
Which yeah, is, yeah, definitely, definitely. Which is actually right, right next to Riverside Church. Mm. Right next to Riverside Church, you understand? And we used to go there, and he introduced me to all of that, and I kind of started to get a feel of the game playing there, and also starting to real starting to understand and realize that New York City was completely a hotbed for basketball at that time. You know, I was, and I was still in the, in, in the, in the infant stages of developing my game. You know what I mean? I was, I was, I was still trying to develop my game as a guard. You know, at that time, I didn't even know that I was, I needed to be a guard. You understand? Um, right. I was, you know, as, as a, as a youth, I was very athletic. So it, you know, as you know, it took me, it took me some time to get to a guard, if you will, a guard's uh, uh, type of play. You know, I was still, it was still, again, it was still um, infant stages of me learning the game, um, infant stages of me understanding the game, you know, learning how to play with referees and things of that nature, you know. And um, it took me, you know, it took a little bit of time, but you know, it was, it was, it was well worth it. At what age? At what age uh, did you fall in love with the game? All right, that's the time you discovering it. When did you like fall in love with it? Um, immediately, immediately when I first, I mean, I want to say five, five years old, and I wasn't even that. I wasn't again. I wasn't that skilled. But just, you know, just seeing the game, um, you know what I'm saying? God bless the dead. My grandmother used to take me to see the Harlem Globetrotters, you know, at Master Square Garden and all that. No and doubt. That, you know, and that was that actually, that was when I said, yeah, this is, I, I like this. I, I love it. You know what I mean? And I started, I wanted to, I, I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn how to play the game. I wanted to, I wanted to play the game, you know, so at that point, um, I started, you know, I started going to the park a lot. I started going to the park in my neighborhood a lot and things of that nature and really trying to hone my skills and, and things of that nature. And like I said, then I was introduced to Stone Gym and to the PALs and things of that nature. Now I'm getting older, you know what I'm saying? So by the time I was 10, 11, I was playing in leagues. I was playing in little, you know, well, what, 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 what tournaments you came up playing in, man? Uh, as a, as a, well, at, in high school or, or no? We talking about right now. We, we still in the preteen ages, right? We talking about preteen. Preteen. I was playing. I was playing PAL. I'm playing PAL. I'm playing in Stone Gym. Um, there was, you know, the the um, there there was also what was that um, uh, Amsterdam Action and um, you know, th you know, this these were the these were the tournaments that I was playing in as a very, very young guy, you know, and I was playing like the position I was playing was like small forward. And, and uh, now mind you, I'm like 10 years old. I'm playing small forward because my skills as a guard weren't home. You know, I didn't hone my skills as a guard yet. So I'm playing like small forward, some power forward, some power forward positions, and things like that. stars like i'm i'm really digging in the crates right now bro like reese all stars in the bronx and you know right right you know there was there was uh leagues there was rather there was tournament up in the bronx that we played in and um you know i was introduced i was introduced to all of this again through my through my guy reggie star and um you know he he was he was a pretty tough player too you know he was a pretty tough so guy reggie star was he the best player in your neighborhood at the time? Hmm. It, I, it was so many. It, you know, it was so it was so many. I, you know, that's a tough. It had to be one. It had to be one top dog, fam. Right? There's always one alpha dog that kind of ruled the surrounding area that everybody kind of look up to. Who was that guy? Well, at this time, again, I'm ten years old. So at this time, I want to say I want to say Reggie was one of he was like for his age he was very skilled. You know what I'm saying we ten years old, 10, 11 years old. He was very skilled. 
Reggie was 10 years we're, we're 10 years old Reggie was able to play the point guard position and run a team well at 10 years old you know what I mean so I would yeah was there anybody older than that was it anybody older than that in high school who like everybody revered even guys like Reggie mm. and you still in Harlem around this time right yeah I was still I was still living in Harlem I had moved to the Bronx. I moved to the Bronx when I was like 16. And now that's a different story. That's okay. Different all right. Story. All right. That was, all a, right. that was a completely different story. I'm going to tell you about that. Um, but yeah, and my, I mean, there was, you know, there was my guy, there was my guy, Chuck Black from my neighborhood at the time. He was a pretty good basketball player, Patrick Paul. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm sorry to put your government out there, but this is my guy. And he was one of the, you know, he was one of the better guys in my neighborhood at the time growing up. You know what I'm saying? He was very, you know, Chuck was very skilled. Um, he could handle the ball. He could shoot. He was dunking. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, now this is now I'm like 12, 13 years old. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to figure it all out. I'm trying to figure it all out. I'm, you know, I'm kind of, you know, at this point, I'm getting my confidence right, right. up as a player, you know, 12, uh -huh. 12, 13 years old. So now, you know, there's, um, I'm, 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 I'm still going to the PAL, to the PALs and, you know, there's so much, but then I started to see that there was so many other dudes out there that was so, that was really, really, really good. And right. I, at that point I knew that I had to, I had to hone my skills because I was so used to playing in leagues from the ages of 10, 11, 12, and I was playing a small forward position. Now, mind you, I'm 10, 12, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. At that time, I'm about maybe five, six, five, seven. You know what I'm saying? Five, eight. I'm still growing, of course. Right. So because now, you know, I'm six, three, I'm six foot three now. So I'm still growing. So but the skills are not. You understand the skills? Right. Right. You didn't, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't get a chance to hone your skills and it wasn't really developed at that time. Right. Now, mind you, I, so you're, now, mind you're you, growing. You right. probably start growing into this body because trust me, when I started out playing, I was five, eight. Then I grew one summer. I grew to six four. That's what happened with me. But I had guard skills at five eight, so it, it kind of helped me when I grew. That's what happened with me. Now I had I had I had you, you know your typical skills. You know I could jump. I, I I was a leaper. I definitely was a leaper. I could jump. I could rebound the ball. Things of that nature. I knew I knew the game. I knew the fundamental basics of the game. But I you know. The way that I was playing, I was playing like I was a forward. You know what I mean. And as I got older, of course, that wasn't that wasn't going to work. You know what I mean. In high school, here I am, coming into high school, a high school freshman, and I'm just about maybe yeah, like five, eight and a half, five nine, coming in with with forward like skills. It's right, not gonna work. That's not going to work. You know. You know when did the transition happen, though, Mark? The transition happened when I got to high school. Initially, when I got to high school, you know, and I noticed, I said, "Well, this I got to work on my handle. I got to work on my guard skills," and that's what I did. I worked on my guard skills, just like yourself. One summer, I went down south, and um, when I came back. When I came back, well, that was after my freshman year. After my freshman year of high school, I went down south. I came back, and I grew immensely. You know what I'm saying? I grew. I was like six. I was six one when I came back, and I knew I was going. I knew I was going to grow some more. You know, I was only like fifteen. I was. I was sixteen actually. Sixteen going into my sophomore year, and I knew I was going. I knew I was going to continue to grow. So, at that point. You know, the Kenny Andersons, and uh, you know what I'm saying, and it was name like, them, oh, name them, fam, name them. I could, I mean, I it's endless, it's endless. I mean, you, your, your Kenny Andersons, your 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 um, 
you know, your Rich Ashmies, your, your, your Derek Felt, you know, um, uh, Bob Felt. Like, it was just, it was so many dudes. It was so, I mean, I, Dexter Dunbar. Like, I could go, it's endless. It's endless. You know what I mean? It's endless. It's, and not just, not just in the CH, CHSAA, like, you know, public school league, um, you know, one of my good guys, one of my, one of my better friends, um, Dave Sweeting. You know what I'm saying? Manhattan Center. You know what I'm saying? Tough, tough. Right, you right, know, right. Tough, tough, tough. tough, tough. And tough guards. Um, you know the Terrence Wrenchers, and you know what I'm saying? Like it was just, and Terrence was younger than us. You know what I'm saying? But it was just like the competition was so fierce and crazy, and and it was like. You know, here I am now, 14, uh, uh, 14, 15, 16, and you know the the Adrian Autrys. Like I could, it's I could go on and on and on and on. You know what I'm saying? Like, Let's go back for one sec. You mentioned one guy who will be on here Sunday, Terrence Wrencher. I heard when he was coming up, they were saying he was going to be another Kenny Anderson. Correct. You know, and he accomplished a lot of things that Kenny did at that time. Correct. Um. How ill was he back then? Oh man, Terrence. I remember Terrence. I remember T when he, T must have been about. T must have been about. Wow, he must have been about thirteen. You know what I'm saying? And he was already like six two. He was six two, left handed, smooth, could play point guard, shooting guard, had the moves. The, you know, the, the the behind the back dribble sharp, a defender, you know what I'm saying? And it was it was it was unreal. It was unreal wow. the things that he was doing at thirteen. You know, at thirteen years old, he looked like he was ready to box it. At thirteen, he was he was just he was just like he was very he was very skilled and he could shoot. He was very That's skilled crazy. left handed. Left handed, thirteen years right, old. Right, right. So man. people was so with the left hand, people was in their mouth. I already had Kenny written in like, "Yo, this kid is the deal," and he had that sweet jump shot. Sweet jumper. He was left handed. You know what I'm saying? And he was thirteen. And when he was thirteen, like I said, he was already like six one. Like six, he 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 was definitely six foot at thirteen. You know what I'm mm. saying? So I remember when, yeah. He was nasty, and I remember when he when uh when he went to St. Raymond's, and he was just he was he was a problem, and everybody saw it. Everybody saw it. You know what I mean? He was tough, tough. I mean, but just it was just that I want to I want to tell you, Glenn, that era, that era from like night from I want to say from 1988, 1988, all the way to about yeah. 19, maybe before that, maybe 87, because, yeah. you know, I wasn't in high school. I, I wasn't in high school. All right, school. Let's, 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 let's just say this, right? From, from a, a, as far back as you can remember, there's always like a, that 10-year gap, right? There's always like that 10-year stretch, Correct. right? Then you go before. Uh, I think in during your time, it was coming to that end because it was it, it was so successful back then. Remember, the the further we go back, the more successful New York City was. No question about it. No question. So about as we it. move up, it became lesser, right? Than it was before. But even during that time in the nineties, in the mid nineties, because that was that stretch when we had so many players coming out uh, at that time. But it was the same thing back in the days. But in your eyes and what you saw, and I seen it too. There was definitely a resurgence. Absolutely. So I think we Absolutely. had hit that peak and then we had kind of dropped after that. Correct. Absolutely. I want to say um, after Stefan left, it kind of like you may say after the Stefan Marbury era. Like after Stefan, yeah, after Steph, um, the Stefan Marbury Lincoln high school era, that's when I want to say that's when it kind of that at, you know, New York City as a hotbed. That's when it kind of it kind of veered off, it kind of veered off for whatever reason, and I and and you know, guys like myself, it was so crazy. 
we you know we just we just instantaneously think yo it's gonna be like this forever you know what I'm saying New York <laughs> City is, if you if you could play in New York City you could play anywhere you know what I'm saying right that, right and that was the, and that was the thought of that was the mindset you know and every you know people wanted to come to New York and play you know other players that you know other other good players great players wanted to come to New York and play against the you know New York City players that it was it, it was it's, it has always been like that you know what I'm saying and um yeah I want to say after the Steph after the Steph era it kind of veered off for whatever reason you know you know it, that it just but the 90s you know uh the late the late 80s into the early 90s that that was tough. That was my era. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was always. Yeah. It was like I think it was so many hungry. Every you know, do you know guys were just hungry, man, hungry. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it was. You know, I'm gonna say another name, Ruben Numhard. Ruben Numhard. That was one of the toughest cats I ever played against. You know what I'm saying? Ruben Numhard. I mean, I could go on and what's on. What's cool? What's cool? What's cool? I can't even remember what school Ruben went to. I think it was it was a public school, but he was tough. Okay, Ruben Numhar. Let me know. Tough. Let me know what school did Ru Ruben Numhar go to, people? I, That's in a room. Yeah, if you yeah in the chat, if you Ruben Numhar, if you if you remember what high school he went to, that was one of the toughest dudes I ever played against. Man, he was yeah. He went to Steve. He went to Stevenson. Yeah, he was tough. He was tough. Oh, he went to Stevenson. Okay, okay. He was tough. Um, you know and. It was just yeah, it was a hot bet, you know, and um No, 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 no. He was saying I have you have to say Lance and Sebastian Stevenson era, right? He mentioned them. Now listen, this is not a knock on those guys because they had great careers, right? right. And of course they, they went to Lincoln. But I, I you gotta understand what, what uh my man Mark is saying in his eyes and what he saw and what he was paying attention to. The right. same with things with myself. I'm not knocking all the other errors. And this is why we kind of have to bridge that those gaps, right? And right. and not say that one error is better than the other because we played in that era. Now, if you ask a kid who played in the 2000s, you're going to say his error was better. Of course. It's just of what course. it is. That's so like it's not a ask, knock. If you ask Stefan, Stefan is going to say, yeah, my error was the best. You know what I'm saying? That's, Rightly yeah. so. Rightly so. You know what I'm saying? I'm well, not, I got a question if I, before you go on. I don't want to lose her. Uh, Julia uh, NC says, was it difficult to get used to playing organized basketball with referees and running plays, and how did you do it? Knowing you you was kind of like finding your way when till you got to high school and then it really started to click. Of course. Well, of course. It took, yeah. Well, it's just like anything else. It's You know, it was a learning curve, just like with the DJ. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't, you know, it's like, it's like anything else, you know, you got to put the work in, you know what I'm saying? And that's what it was. I learned, I had to learn how to play with referees. I could play in the park all day long, you know? And like I said, my man, Reggie Starr, he introduced me to organized basketball, you know? Um, uh, and, and what happened, I, uh, yeah, I just, eventually I learned how to play with, with the referees out there. I learned, and I, you know, just like anything else, and I learned how to play with plays. You know, you, you know, it's all, all of it, all of it is learning. All of it yeah. is completely learning. And, and yeah. that's what, and that's what it was. It was, you know, it, it, it absolutely took some time. It took some time and I learned, you know, you know, I, of, of course, when you first get out there, it's, you know, it's trial and error. You run the play, you might run the play wrong. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I, you know, you could be the smartest basketball player ever. You know what I'm saying, Glenn? Like It happens. It happens to everybody. It happens to everybody. All the, you know, whomever, whomever you are, if you, if you, the greatest talent, like you have to, you know, you have to learn how to play. You have to learn how to run plays. You know what I mean? That's, that's an important part of it. And, and, and it, yeah, it took me some time, um, you know, but when I got to high school, I was able to, you know, I was used to playing. I was used to playing with referees, so that kind of came naturally. But again, like I said earlier, I had to hone my skills a little more because I was pretty much playing like a small forward, you know. Right. And um, I had to hone my skills more, so I started working on my handle and my guard, my guard skills. 
and things of that nature. And um, that's what I did. I used to go to the park a lot, you know, as I did as a youngster. And then in high school, I did that as well. And I was just, um, I worked on, I worked on my skills. I worked on my skills and things. Of that now we have a, we have, we have a breakthrough because my guy, best basketball said, uh, Rue went to Clinton and Weber State. Salute. Clinton. He went to Clinton. Look, yeah. Let, yeah. let him know. We, we, we talked about him and we want to definitely have him on Basketball Heads Live, man. Absolutely. Definitely. I yeah. appreciate you, my brother. Thank you. Yeah. So, when you was coming up, who did you pattern your game after? Mm. It's a good question. Um, well, at the time, I, of course, I was an, I'm, I was a New York Knicks fan, of course. And um, at that time, who was really making noise was it was Mark Jackson, the guard, you know, but um <laughs> and I I, I thought you was gonna say Ross Strickland, but that, 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 that worked too. And you know what I'm saying, Glenn? That right there is another story, man, because I used to go to different, you know, try out for different AAU teams outside of Riverside, you know what I mean? And then like the coaches would ask me my name and they'd be like, Mark Jackson, come on, man. I know you idolize this guy, but come on. Which, like, they didn't believe me. And, you know, here I am, you know, 11, 12 years old, and they like, come on, man. That ain't your name, fam. That, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I dealt, I, you know, I, you know, those were, those were um, experiences that I had to, you know, I had to live with. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, yeah, like a lot of coaches. That's tough. That's tough. Because every time you, you, uh, you know, guys, we don't really care about that. But a coach, you tell a coach that he like Mark Jackson. Yeah, so I had to deal with that. You know what I mean? Okay, gotta, let me see what you got. Right, right, and that was, and that's, and that, and that, that's extra added pressure. That was, and that was the scenario. That absolutely was the scenario. It was extra added pressure. Well, this kid is saying his name is Mark Jackson, so he must be, he must be the goods. You know what I mean? So I, it was, yeah, it was, it was tough. It was tough. So, you know, I would go harder. You know, I would try to show all aspects of the game, my defensive game as well, because a lot of coaches look, look, you know, look for that as well. So I would, you know, it was, yeah. So, it, it, you know, it was a lot of, it was, it was absolutely added pressure with just telling these coaches what my name was. You know what I mean? And they like, yo, this kid is, you know, this kid is telling us his name is Mark Jackson, man. Like, come on, B. Like, is he for real? Like, you know what I mean? So, so, right. it was, yeah, it was a lot with that. You know, even when I would go to summer camps and things like that, you know, coaches would be like, Mark Jackson, really? You know, but, you know, I, I was able to show them that I could play. And, you know, I guess it kind of like, you know, it kind of, you know, they were sweeping under the rug a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But they still was like, come on, you know. What year did you make the team? Which team? High school. Oh, yeah. Well, immediately. Freshman year, you know. um, I played freshman. And then, um, you know, I played with, like, I, like as you mentioned, I played with Jamal Mashburn. Um, incredible talent, you know. I known Jamal. I met Jamal uh, at 13 years old, and honestly, the things that he he did in the league and in at, at Kentucky, he was doing at 13 years old. <laughs> it's an amazing, just an amazing talent. You know what I'm saying? That is a, crazy. Yo, just an amazing. Like he was just amazing, an amazing <laughs> talent, amazing talent. He um. How tall was he at thirteen? I'm about yeah. That's a, yeah. At thirteen, I want to say he was about he was about six four. He was six four when he came to Hayes. When he came to Hayes, he was six four, and he was doing like there was no like. I mean, of course, he worked on his game, but he, I mean, he had that you know he had that smooth in and out, the spin, everything that he everything that he displayed at Kentucky, he was already doing at thirteen years old. He was doing all of that at 13 years. That's old. crazy. You know, yeah, he was doing all and that. And if you think about Mash, you, if you think about Mash, he wasn't that cut up dude, right? No, no he's, actually, even actually, in college and as a grown up, he said like the baby fat, but still killing. Like it was just like incredible. When he, when, when we came, when as freshmen at Cardinal Hayes, he was yeah, he was chubby. 
but he has skills. He has right. skills. The skill, his skill set was unmatched. His skill set was unmatched. He clearly was the best kid in the in the in the school. You know what I mean at that time. And um, yeah, he was just like he was. Uh, you know, again, his skill set was there at at the at the tender age of 13, 14, we freshmen, and he was doing amazing things out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then, like, yeah, like, as you said, as time progressed, you know, and then when he went to Kentucky, you know, all that, you know, he, he was in the gym. He started, you know, I guess he started weight training. He did start weight training. He, well, he actually started weight training uh, later on in high school. But, you know, he definitely went hard in Kentucky. You know what I'm saying, and um, yeah, he was yeah he was a problem. He was definitely a problem, and uh, yeah, that's my guy. I haven't talked. To, I haven't talked mm -hmm. to him all. Gordon Winchester, that's my dude. Yeah, now, somebody mentioned Gordon Winchester. Gordy. Yeah, that's my guy. Gordy, yeah, Gordy, that's my guy. That's my guy. That's definitely my guy. Gordy was definitely uh, shout to my yeah shout to my brother Gordon Winchester. Gordy was definitely. Let me say this at Riverside Church, okay. Gordon Winchester was definitely one of the one of the best players at Riverside Church, mm. and I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm saying I'm not saying that just because that's my guy and that's my brother, but he was one of the best. You know, I'm talking about in that he was he was in that he was in that uh, he was in he was all city with the likes of God bless. God bless the dead, Malik Sealy, and he yeah. was, he was all city at that time when Malik Sealy was at was like you know Miss you talking about Mr. Basketball and Malik right. Malik was a terror we all know that you know what I'm saying yes yeah, rest in peace Malik and Malik, a good guy and a, and a and an amazing guy and an amazing guy rest in rest his soul that was that was definitely the big brother you know what I'm saying Malik, all right so let let's let's get back. Focus on you, right? Because we're going to get back to naming some other guys as well. Right. Now, with, you know, you're playing with Jamal, right? And rightfully so, all the attention is focused on him. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. The scouts, the yeah. coaches. Did, did, do you feel like you got your fair shot in playing enough time or uh, being feeling like you was a part of the team? And what kind of run did y'all have while he was there? Well, here's the thing. There were so many guards. We had we had a ton of guards. We had a ton of guards. And so everybody was fighting for that shine, if you will. You know what I'm saying? And uh yeah, like with with Jamal, you know, you had all sorts of scouts and 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 uh you know recruiters, you know, college recruiters that came specifically to see him. So or and you know, as a team, we all knew that, and um, it you know, so guys were really, really trying to. It was a battle just within the team because we knew that they were coming to see Jamal, and so you know, it's like you know, you know, like like the NCAA theme song, you know, that shining moment. You know what I'm saying, Glenn? So it was like everybody was fighting to get that shining moment. You know, and it was it was it was tough. It was tough within the team itself because we knew, okay, well, you know, they coming they coming out for more. They coming out for Jamal. You know what I'm saying? So it was really it was tough. It was tough. So did did you did you ever uh, have a breakout moment during any time in high school where you know you planned against all those top guards? Listen. Back when you was playing in that era, every team had a good guard, and every night it was and it was a night. battle. Every night it was. I mean, every night it was. Every night it was a tough battle. I mean, you know, like I said earlier, you know, you had the likes of Kenny Anderson. Kenny, shout to my shout to my bro, Kenny Anderson, my guy, Kenny Anderson. You know, he was he was like he was absolutely the the top the top guard in New York City at that time. You know, he was – and they was coming to see him too, you know. So when we would play Malloy, that was just like, oh, if you getting – if you getting your – if you getting some time, you knew that all of the top recruiters in the country was going to see you and then you could potentially have your shining moment, 
you know what I'm saying? But it was, but you know, more, you know, more so than that. Yeah, like every night it was something. Every night, you know, you had it was so many, it was so many good guards. You know, you had the Khalid Reeves, Khalid Reeves of the other world, and you know what I'm saying? Like he's, you know, shot the Khalid Reeves. Like he's another Derek guy. Phelps, his back core partner. Derek Phelps, that's my brother. That's my, that's my brother. Derek Phelps, tough. You know what I'm saying? Like. I remember when I met I remember when I met Khalid, you know, I must have yeah, I was about 13, 14, and he was he's another one. You know what I'm saying? And he was just hungry. He was just hungry, Khalid. And he he, you know, he he was he was he wasn't thinking about Riverside and Gauchos and all that. He was like, yo, I'm here, I'm gonna make something happen, and that's what he did. Like and it was just, it was just, it was just such a hotbed of basketball. It was so many tough players and tough guards, and it was a battle every night, whether it be Catholic school basketball or public public high school basketball. It didn't matter. It was always it was tough every single night, every single mm. night. Every so night. Here's the question. In all your years of basketball, from Cardinal Hayes to the Summer Leagues, who ass did you bust to let you know that that you can play? <laughs> well, I would say, like I said, one of the toughest one of the tougher battles that I had was with was was against my guy Ruben Nemhard, and he was tough. And I want to say that I, you know, it was just it was just back and forth. We was going at each other. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I had, I had, I had tough battles with a lot of. I mean, it's, it was, you know, it was, it, it, it was just so competitive, man. I mean, yeah, that was one of that. Me going, me going up against Ruben Numhart. That was one of my better. Uh, um, like I really was showing my stuff, you know what I mean? But like, yeah, I mean, you know, playing, you know, playing against guys like uh Khalid Reeves and 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 Rich Ashme and and you know these guys and these guys were tough, tough guards, man. You know, division one worthy guards. You know, my brother Derek Phelps, you know, just going against these guys, you know, night in, night out. You know, and it and it and it built, it built, it built me in terms of confidence. You know, um, not just, not just on on the court, off the court as well. You know. Yeah. Sometimes we have to go through that, and <clears throat> I tell guys, it's yeah. Sometimes it's about who asks you bust, but a lot of times it's who you competed against. When you feel like you competed. And you know that that guy's on a higher level to, than you. Then that's a win-win. No doubt. That's like right. you know you getting jumped by two or three dudes and you fight back. You won. No doubt. And you, especially if you no live. Doubt. No doubt. No, no question about it. I do not condone violence. Let me just say that I'm just using that. Nah, you as an example. You using it, right? But this is all. This is this is all relative. This is all right. relative. It it is. It is, and that's and that's what it was. It was constant. It was constant battles, you know. And it was like if you didn't, you either showed up or you didn't. You either showed up or you didn't. You know what I'm saying? And you knew at the end of the game because those dudes that you knew was going to be you, the, those dudes that you were competing against, you knew. After at the end of the game, when they would come up to you and they would give you, you know, they give you a pound and a hug, you knew. And that's what every dude, every every dude that I played against, that's what it was, you know. And that's how you, that's how I knew for myself that all right, well, I'm, you know, I I fit in, I fit in, you know what I'm saying. So and that's what it was, and it it created, it created the confidence, you know. Like I said, it was, I mean, it was so many, it was so many. You know, and then even in the summer, summer leagues and things like that, you know, you playing all of the time. You just playing, playing, playing. Right. You wanna you wanna you wanna get better. You know, when you hungry, you know, when you're hungry to get better and you do, 
that was always that was that was also felt. That was also felt. You know what I'm saying? Yo, let me tell you. I'm telling you right now, we have a situation going on in a room that um I think we should talk about for one moment, right? So this is uh always exciting for me when I see people going at it in the room. All right? right? So we're just gonna do this real quick. This is hey, right now we got uh cool B30 uh cool B TV network and my man Russ Williams going back and forth. Just a little bit. Uh Kubi TV said Shout out to my bro Kubi. That's my man. That's my brother. Yo, he said public schools uh are tough and the Catholic schools are scared to play the public schools. And then my guy Russ Williams came in, who played up in Clancy. He was like, Hold on. The Catholic School League is one of the toughest leagues in the country. So is the PSL AA. But this is a great thing because I I I just we just did a uh a Zoom chat, and I got to put it out soon, about the competition between the PSAL and the Catholic School League. I want to so, say this. That's a whole nother show, but I, whole, I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. Show, right. That's a whole nother. That's a, <laughs> yeah. that's a whole Right, nother right. Nother. And I want to say equally, equally, the con the, again, see, I'm, see, I'm, I'm 80, I'm 86 to 90. Equally, Equally, it was again. It was every night, every single night. I don't care if you was boys and girls, Clinton High School, Park West, whatever it is. Norman Thomas, Cardinal Hayes, Malloy, you know, uh, uh, um, um, you know, Saint Nicholas of Talentine. I You could go on and on and on and on and on. Every night, every night. Every night, public school, Catholic school, whatever, parochial school, it didn't matter. Every night, it was a battle. Every night. Yes. Yes. Every yes. night. Yes. Every night. Yes. Every Pick your poison. Night, it, any night, somebody could get it. Any anybody could get it. It was such a it was such a hotbed at during that time. It was such a hotbed for basketball, and cats was hungry to get their name up. It didn't matter. It did not matter. And any and any anybody could get anybody could could really get you know get get theirs off in a game and that game will be talked about for days and months and maybe even years to come. Right, you know right. Mean? Like that's how it was. Okay. That's how it was. So you played all the way up to your senior year. Correct. Now, the next step is usually college for most ball players. Absolutely. What did you do? I went to college. I did go to college. Um, I had I had letters that my coach was was holding from me, but and that was cool. But I with holding that I letters, that's a crime. That's a crime. We got withholding letters. That's a crime. <laughs> That's a crime. But I figured, you know, I figured it out. So what I ended up doing was I um I ended up going I ended up going to a junior college uh in Lake Placid, New York. And I played there for two years. Then I transferred from there. Uh and then I went to Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina. Shaw, salute to my one of my mentors, uh the legendary coach Ray Haskins, he was definitely there as well. Absolutely, absolutely, and um, and that's what happened. And um, uh, you know, I just at that at that particular point, you know what I mean. I knew that you know I knew I wasn't I knew I wasn't going to the league or nothing like that. But I continued to play, and um, you know, in college. You know, I started to, you know, I always had, now here, here's the segue into the music. You know what I'm saying, Glenn? So in college, I always had, you know, even before college, I always had it. I always had a love for music, always had an ear for music. And um, I decided to, to learn, to learn how to DJ. 
at that point. And mm. you know, luckily for me, I was I was friends with a lot of DJs. I was friends with a lot of DJs out of New York City at that point. You know, um, you know, guys like you know uh, uh, DJ SNS, uh, DJ Craig G. Um, you know, I knew these guys really well um, and things of that nature. And I decided to learn. And again, just like basketball, it you know, I went through, you know, my, my trials and tribulations with it learning and, uh, you know, learning the craft and getting better. You know, you know, it, it took, it took, it took some time. It took years, you know, and, um, when I finished when I finished college, um, I was still playing a little bit, not a whole, not a whole hell of a lot, but I was playing. I was I was still good enough to play in leagues. Um, I played in a couple pro ams, you know, in New York um, and things of that nature. And um, well, what pro am did you play? What pro am did you play? Uh, what was it? The one? Uh, yeah, the one. The one. What was that? The that was. The Nike Pro Am, I want to say it was. They put okay. games at uh, what school was that? Um, where where was that? I, I, yeah, Brandeis. You had City College. No, not not City College. It, yeah, I believe it was Brandeis. Brandeis. Okay. The games was at Brandeis, and I played there. Um, uh, um, I I played. I remember. I I think I was telling you a couple. It was one summer. I was really, and this is when I was still at Shaw. One summer I came home and I was working out really, really hard. I was working out at Gaucho Gym. I was working out at Gaucho Gym almost every day one summer. And one of my, you know, one of my, well, definitely, like one of my favorite all-time guards, salute, shout out to Rod Strickland. Rod Strickland used to be in a gym. And I would watch him, and he would watch me. I was in there working out, and he was in there working out. Rod, and it was amazing to me, because Rod was in there. He wouldn't touch a ball. He was in there, and he was just running laps, and he had he had a, uh, he had the, 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 the body punching bag. Yeah. And he would put the bag, he would put the bag on his shoulders, and he was running laps with that bag, Around Gaucho Gym, he was he was doing several laps. I was like, "Yo, this is." Wild. Yo, let me tell y'all, not the little punching bag where you go. Nah, nah, no, nah, nah, the big the body big, punching bag. The okay, the big long big, one on the back. Pause. The big it pause. <laughs> the big <laughs> the big body bag. And right. He would, put, he would put that. He would put that on his shoulders. He would put that on his shoulders, and he was he would run around the gym. He was doing laps in the gym, and I was like, "Yo." This dude is and this dude is a perennial all star. You know, like this dude is a this dude is one of the top guards in the league. And he putting in this work. He's putting in this work. He is putting in this work on the off season. Heavy. You know what I'm saying? DJ Mighty Mark versus DJ Clue and Ball. Yeah, well <laughs> listen, if y'all want to set that up, we can set that Who up. Who wins? Who wins, Mark? Who wins? Listen. I never seen. I heard Clue could play a little something, but nah. I, you know, I'm I'm definitely betting on me. Definitely. If, betting if, on me. if if he if he wasn't part of the brotherhood, he don't got a chance. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> I'm definitely betting on me. But I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, shout to you know, shout to DJ Clue. You know what I'm saying? He absolutely is a legend. You know. In the yeah, world. definitely shout to Clue. You know uh, what I'm saying? This next question I, I put in. This is for my guy, uh, Russ Williams, who got Transitional Tuesdays on Facebook. You know, I speak to a lot of guys about the transitional part of their life, right? And right. you faced one being in college saying, you know, this bull thing is not going to take me where I need to go. Right. Right? Right. And you started to pick up, which was a hobby at first, right? And it turned to something that you can actually make a living from. Right, right. Was that transition difficult for you, leaving the ball behind? Um, yeah, it was tough. It, it was definitely tough because, you know, this is something. I mean, and and I mean, the love, the love of the game 
will never leave. That will never leave my my spirit or my soul. You know what I'm saying? But right. leave it, like leaving leaving the game alone and knowing that you know coming to grip. You know what I'm saying? Coming to grips with okay, well, you know the ideals of about going overseas is mm, I don't know if that's gonna happen or you know trying to you know trying you know even try even having you know dreams of, of, of going into the league. You know, those, you know, as a as a true ball player, you know, yeah, it's tough to, to kind of like let all of that go. But, you know, reality, reality is reality. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and it's um, like you right in the face if you're not prepared for it. Absolutely. And, you know, um, you know, coaching, coaching was always, you know, you have you have the love for the game. So coaching was always an option. You know, it still it still is an option now. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I you know, I'm I try to stay um uh aware and 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 observant of, of our youth coming up today. And you know, I have I have zero I have zero issues or, or, or problems with sharing with, you know, you know, younger, you know, young the younger generation, oh, you need to do this, you know, you need to learn, you need to learn how to do in and out. You need to, you know what I'm saying? You need to learn, you need to learn, there's more to it. You need to learn how to shoot. You know, you need to learn, you need to learn, uh, change your pace. Um, you definitely need to learn how to play defense, you know, and these are the things that I, you know, as a coach, I would emphasize on to younger players, you know, learn, you know, and when you do these things, you know, Definitely developing your confidence, you know, though, you know, all of these things. These are these are the things um that I would do. So to answer your question fully, yeah, it was tough to kind of leave, you know, let the basketball go. Um, you know, and like I said, when I got into when I got into the DJing world, I kind of took on the same, I definitely took on the same passion with the DJing as I do with, with playing basketball. And I also had the same mindset of, you know, any, you know, the compet the the competitive nature in terms of the competitive nature. You know, there's there's so many there's so many great DJs, you know, not only in New York City, but throughout the throughout the world. And I Yeah, and, and, for sure. Right. And I had that and I basically had that same mentality like you know, you got to work on, you know, you got to work on your game, B. You got to work on your game if you're trying to, if you're trying to make a name for yourself as well as, you know, just, just setting the tone. You got to, you have to work on your game. And it was pretty much the same thing. So, you know, I, I put a lot of work in, in terms of practicing, practicing, you know, sets and playing music and learning how to play certain music and learning how to rock parties and things of that nature. It was a lot of, it when, was a lot when, of studying. When, when did your big break come in music to where, you know, you can actually go to different stations or different areas of play? When was that big break and that big moment? We all have them. It happens in sports, you know, in life. What was um, that, that big moment? I would say it was a couple, it was a couple of moments, I would say. Um, I remember one event, of, well, it was a couple. Um, a, a lot of the time I would, you know, I would, I was opening up. I was opening up for big name, for big name DJs, if you will, you know, uh, shout out to, shout out to the big bro, the world famous DJ Kick and Pre. You know what I'm saying? That's I, right. That's I, right. I, I icon. Up, right. Icon. Living legend. Um, a few times I opened up for Kick and Pre and I would have to say in New York City and out of state and these were these were the moments these were the shining moments just like what we we talked about earlier those were the shining moments for me um just opening up for kick and pre and opening up for various i opened up for a lot of djs early in my career you know uh definitely opening up for kick and pre um opening up, opening up for guys like dj envy um dj self um you know, I could go on uh uh DJ Scratch. You know, you know Salute, salute, my god DJ Scratch. 
Yeah, opening up for him. And you know, he Brooklyn favorite. He was he was he was one of the illest dudes I ever seen on the turntables, you know what I'm saying? Outside of, you know, the kick of course the kick capris and right. You know, um uh listen, King Capri is the only guy I know that could rock a party and don't have to play any new music. No music. No new music, and he will. You don't have to play any new music. He can rock a party just playing disco or just playing R&B. Whatever he choose to pick, he's going to kill a party. No and he's doing his own different way. So salute DJ Kid Capri. I've seen him do it on numerous occasions. Salute the big bro. Salute the big bro. Poochie Kid Capri, man. I mean, I have opened up for him several times. I opened up for him one time. It had to be like 2,000 people in the building. And to see 2,000 people just rocking, that was that was inspiring to me. You know what I mean? Just having, you know, the like he literally shook the building. You know, you, you know mm. how you hear DJ saying, you know, they shook the building. Like he literally had the building rocking. You could feel the building vibrating. You know what I'm saying, and that, and that, you know, th these are these are moments that I will never ever forget. You know, um, yeah. All right, let's stay on the music. Let's stay on the music right now. Okay. Right now, top five DJs all time. <laughs> wow. Oof. Kick a pre. It's tough, man. Um, put me on the spot, bro. <laughs> yo, yo, look, my artist wanted, he want to hear this. Woo. Top five of all time? Yes. Kick a pre. DJ SNS. That's my brother. Okay. Um, party, like party DJs? Fam. Just don't say party. Just give me five DJs. I know you said Scratch is one of them. Scratch is one of is is incredible, incredible man. Um, Dick Capri, SNS, Scratch. Um, that's three right there, right? That's three. Uh, man. Um, get this right, or my man. Gonna mess your picture up. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, I definitely gotta throw. I definitely gotta throw my bro, Boogie Blind in there. Boogie Blind, okay. he's one of the illest, and that's my like that's my family. Uh, Boogie Blind, ill, just 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 sick with it. Um, damn, it's tough, man. One more, fam. Tough. Um, wow, one more. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna keep it home. I'm gonna keep it home. I'm gonna say DJ Craig G, definitely. Okay, okay, that's my, that's my top. All right, so, all right, yeah, yeah, Mel Star, Mel Star, definitely Mel. You know, I'm, I, I see, I see what you're saying, Mac. Yeah, Mel Star. <laughs> Jazzy Jeff is tough too. Jazzy Jeff is tough, man. I, it's just, yeah, yeah, it's definitely, tough. definitely, definitely, definitely. But you gotta go with who you gotta go with. You know what I'm saying? So, exactly. not wrong with that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, my man was in the back was saying, "Go ahead, I'll let you say it. Go ahead, tell me who you ain't want him to say." Oh, I was like, please don't say flex. <laughs> nah. <laughs> and, and I, no, you know, no, no disrespect no disrespect to flex funk flex at all you know i d and i dj with him as well you know what i'm saying but um i mean that's just my that's just my my personal the top five cool now let's top five mcs <laughs> all right well i'm gonna just let me just let me just start off my favorite oh hold on hold on hold on, hold on. I'm gonna bring you back, right? Cause the time is about to run out. You can think about it, right? I give you a chance to think about it, and you have a. <laughs> 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 
All right, so you got some time to think about it, my brother, all right? Jeopardy, yeah. We're going to come right back. Top five MCs. Ready? All right, that's it. <laughs> all right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nasty Nods, number one. It's my top. Salute to the God. Salute to the God. Nazir Jones. That's my top. Number one. Number two. Big pun. Woo! Big pun. Got Dead in the middle of little Illini. <laughs> I, I could never do that part on the song, but the little big pun. Salute. And rest in peace. And rest in, and rest in peace. Rest in paradise. Big pun. Um, Notorious B.I.G. You got to throw Notorious B.I.G. in there. Big A. That's right. My dude. Salute and R.I.P. to Big. Sleep in peace, B.I.G. Um, <laughs> tough, man. Um, tough. Uh, you got to throw Rock Kim in there. Okay, okay, girl. I was like, you, you're taking too long, fam. What's going on? <laughs> Rock Kim to God. That's right. How many Salute, is that? Rock Kim. Is that four? That's four. Damn. He's going back to thinking, Moral. <laughs> All right, now, <laughs> we, we got the legendary Bobby Hunter in the building. Gold Trotter great Bobby Hunter's in the building. Salute, Bobby Hunter. Salute. Salute. Um, Last guy. I guess you got to throw Hov in that. You got to throw Hov in You got to throw Hov. You got to throw Hov. You got to throw Hov in there. Let me tell you something. Fam, let me tell you something. Jay-Z, and I'm not saying it because it's the right thing to say or whatever. I watched him from the beginning. I remember the days when, you know, Kane used to take his music to the record labels and Kane had him opening up. Right. I watched him study the game. What Jay Z has done with music, oh, incredible! Is incredible. Not only did what he done, I'm not even talking about money wise. I'm just talking about lyric wise and what he done with the music and being able to stretch his career so long. And starting so late, Jay put out his first album at 26, 27. Absolutely, that's late in the game, fam. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. And for him to keep switching it up and yeah. stay on top. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. unmatched. Unmatched. Unprecedented. All that. Unmatched. 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 All right. Number top five. Top five ball players in New York City history. Oh, man. <laughs> Damn. Top five? Damn. Top five in New York City history. Mm. Gotta be a student in the game, fam. Yeah. Top five in New York City history. Bobby Hunter, put up your top five. <laughs> Damn. Um... Top five. See, why you thinking, you thinking, I'm going to let you know, Tiny Archibald, my point guard. I was going to say, I was going to say Tiny. Rolando Tiny. Blackman is my two guard. Damn. That's what I'm saying. Bernard, like, King, Bernard King is my small forward. 
Connie Hawkins is my power forward. Kareem and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is my center. That's tough, man. Top Go five. Go ahead. Name your team, fam. Top five. Top five. That's, that's, that's tough. Let's make okay. some noise for my team. Okay. So, so you took it there. You took it there. You took it there, Glenn. So top five of all time. So that so I can't name any players that you name, right? No, nah, go ahead, name your whatever. Name your top five. It's okay. I just want to give you some inspiration. Out of, New <laughs> out of New York, out of New York City, top five. Damn. Of all time. You gotta throw Dr. J in there. Okay. You gotta throw Julia Servant in there. Um, and we accept all our people from Long Island as New Yorkers, so it's yeah, all yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, Kareem, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. You know? That's two. Um, that is that is so tough, bro. That is tough. Um, I'm going to throw Ron Strickland in there. Ron Strickland. That's a good one. That's a good one right there. Definitely. Ron Strickland. Um, Chris Mullen. Ah. Chris Mullen. I could, look, look, I could have switched either Chris Mullen or Bernard King. Either or. It would have been, yeah. Bernard King. Should have picked, I should have put Chris in that team. Need a shooter. Bernard, Damn it. Bernard King was so tough, though. He was, uh, Bernard King was tough. You know what I'm saying? Especially <laughs> growing up as a New York Knicks fan. Bernard King was a man. He was a beast. He was but now beast. I'm thinking about, now you got me rethinking my team now. Because. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, nah, Chris Mullen, um, how many is that that I say so far? How many? You said, uh, Chris Mullen, Dr. J, and you said Kareem. That's four? That's three. Okay. And I got to put I got to put my guy, the Monster Mash, in there. Oh, you said Mullen, and you said Mullen as well, and, and Mash, that's five. Got to put my guy in there, Monster Mash. You know what I'm saying? Gotta now, Bobby Hunter said, Tony... You gotta let me know last name, cause you know we younger guys. We don't know Connie. I know Roger Brown, definitely a monster. Tiny, or uh, Archibald and Doctor J. Right. He said Kareem as well. Okay. And who else was done? Somebody put their five. Uh, hastily says Kareem, Doc, Bernard King, Tiny, and Chris Mullen. Yeah. I, look, Bernard King. Bernard King was. I would have to put Chris. If I'm talking about teams, right? I wanted to pick people that could play together and would have been unselfish. Right. But right. I'm thinking now I would need another shooter. I got Orlando Blackman. I know Tiny can shoot, but he's such a great distributor and can score anywhere in the court. Right. I would have to have another shooter on the wing because Bernard will be clogging up the, the baseline for Kareem and Connie. Right. So in this day and age, I would have to spread it open. So I, I, I think I would replace Bernard King with Chris Mullen. Mm. Mm. Tony Jackson. Wow. Okay. Bobby Hunter said the Tony with the Tony Jackson. Tony Jackson. Okay. T. Yep. Short said Gerald Green, Gerald. who was on here. <laughs> For Gerald. sure. G. Yeah. Green. All right. Now. Your perception of New York City basketball right now? Um, I'm not saying. Well, you know, it's a different. It's a different time. It's a different. Okay. Time. Okay. Um. Uh. These guys, you know, not and I and I'm not. I'm, I'm not going. I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, oh well, we didn't have access to this, this, and this. 
it's a different time. It's a it's a different time. You know what I'm saying, Glenn? It's a yeah. different time. And um uh it's I think it's it's starting to become a hotbed again like how it was in the in the in the you know in the in the early in the early eighties. Um even in the even I I, I guess I wanna say in the seventies, you know, when you had, you know, you had uh, guys in the early eighties, in the early early eighties, when you had guys like Rod Strickland when he was in high school and things like that. It's I think that it's becoming, it's starting to become a hotbed again. I think for the girls, I think right now the girls are going uh, to better colleges straight from high school more than the guys are right now. So um definitely. And I and I agree. It it's it's it, it seems like it's it's coming back around. Absolutely. But absolutely I think right now we're we're too far behind Jersey. That's who we playing catch up to right now. We're playing mm -hmm. catch up to, to Jersey and mm -hmm. God knows how far we are behind California. But again it's a work in progress. Right. And I think it starts with conversation and then the action that follows. No question. No question about it, you know. Three people. Three people. The best high school basketball you played against, the best college player you played against, and the best pro, no matter if he was in high school, college, or summer league. <laughs> three players, just three. One in high school, one in college, and one pro. I have to say, I have to say, uh, damn. Who Kenny in high school? Anderson, Kenny Anderson. Kenny Anderson. And Kenny he, Anderson. He's a pro. He was a pro. He's a pro also. So, so you answered both high school and pro. That That's your now best college player you played against. Hmm. Hmm. Again, Ruben Numhart, he was tough, man. Like, he was, this, this dude was tough. He was tough, man. You know, he was tough. He was tough. He was really solid. No he, doubt. No he was, doubt. He was tough. And, and we, we're going to try to find where the hell Ruben Numhart is so we can get yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I would like to show. know. I definitely would like to know. I definitely would. I definitely would be. I'm intrigued to know. I'm intrigued. Yeah, so. After kicking it with you and talking with you on the phone and learning your story, can you give some advice to some kids out there who may not see themselves as one of the better ball players and they're finding it hard to figure something else out? You, you took that path of <clears throat> into the music industry, right? right? Right. Honing your craft as a DJ, even though it wasn't easy, you made your transition. Correct. Can you give some advice out there to some young man or, or young woman out there who is having a difficult time, you know, at the basketball or because basketball didn't work out for them? Well, that's that's the time to really, you know, and this and this is hard too. What I'm about to say, that is the time to really kind of like tap into yourself. Um. You know, and and especially now, to the in today's world, you know, there's a lot of you know. I have to say, and you know this too, Glenn. There's a lot of distractions out here. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So for young for young people, there's a lot of distractions. For for older people too, there's a lot of distractions out here in the world, and you have to be centered to kind of look into yourself really and say, and try to figure it out. If, if basketball didn't happen to work out for you or did, you know, the path that you were, the path that you were trying to engage in didn't work out for you. You know, what, what, 
else is it could I do? Or what else, what else is it that I want to do? You know, you really have to, you know, and, that's, and that's difficult, you know, that's difficult. You know, you have to tap into, it was difficult for me, you know, and, and this is absolutely a different time now, a different time and age now from when I tapped into myself and said, you know what, the, you know, I'm not going to the league. I'm not, you know, I had to, you know, I had to fight that. You know, I had to, I was fighting myself with that. You know, I'm not going to the league. I'm not going overseas. So what is it that I'm going to do? What else, what else is it? What else is there that I can do that I have a passion for? You know? Ah, uh, that's key. That's key. I want to make some noise for that right there. That's key. That's key. Because... That's what I. That's one of my P's, right? Right. right. Twelve P's that when I mentor kids, uh, I kind of give them a breakdown of these twelve P's. And purpose is the first one, and passion is definitely the next one because without passion, it it turns into work. Exactly. exactly. And there's nothing wrong with hard work, but right. when you're doing something you love, it makes life so much better. No question. No question. Just like going. Going back to, you know, earlier life, I had so much passion for the game of basketball. It wasn't, you know, I, I'm playing just to play because I, I had passion for the game. And the same the same comes along with the DJing, you know. I had so much passion for it, for the music, you know. It's like, you know, don't get me wrong. You want to, you know, you don't, if, if you're doing events and things like that, of course you want to make your money. But DJing, I have so much passion for it equally just like basketball the game of basketball is nothing for me to do it it's 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 almost effortless you know and that's what you know and I'm saying this to the young people that's something that you want to tap you want to tap into yourself and really 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 kind of just sit with yourself and figure those things out any event that you're you're in a situation where basketball is not taking you on the path that you would want it to, to take you. You know, you have to really tap into yourself and say, all right, well, what is it that I want to do? Maybe it's coaching. Maybe it's not coaching, you know. Um, you know, it's just it's a matter of um, just really getting, you know, digging deep into yourself. And you know, yeah. just kind of, you know what I'm saying, Glenn? Just kind of yeah. having just kind of having a meeting, you know, I, this is what I call it, having a meeting with yourself and saying, you know what, well, what is it that I really want to do here? What is it that I really want to do? Maybe I want to, maybe I want to coach. Maybe I want to pass on the skills that I, that I worked on that I so hardly worked on and pass and pass that on to the youth. You know, that well, what, what, what was it about DJ? What was it about DJ that make you take that turn there? Because that's not a, uh, a transition from basketball. That's not like the usual transition, right? Well, again, um, absolutely. Well, again, like I said, I always had, I always had uh, a passion for music. Always, there you go. From, okay, even from even from a you know even from a youth, you know, I always had I always had a passion for music. You know, God bless the dead. My mother, she used to always say that I had an ear for music. As, mm, as, Luke as, Mall. As, yeah, yeah, rest yeah, in peace. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace to my mother. Yeah, she used to say that. You know, you got an ear for music. You all, you know, and my and you know what I'm saying. I grew up where music was always played in my house. You know what I'm saying. God bless the God bless the dead. My mother. Here's here's another story, Glenn. My mother, right? Her birthday was on New Year's Eve. So there was, mm. you know, you understand what I'm saying. So for all of my life, my there was always a crazy party in my house. Right, right, from, right. From like from like three years old, on hearing years the old best days. music, hearing the best music, hearing the best of the best music. You understand? So that's that's where that that part of it came from. You know, the music was always there. It was always there. Right. You know, as you know, as a compet, as a com you know, as a as a fierce competitor, you know, in high school and 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 playing college ball and also you know, print, playing in the pro-ams and, you know, leagues and, you know, things of that nature. The music was never, the music was always a part of it. Music was always there. You understand? <laughs> so, 
Uh -huh. So um, it quite naturally, it's, it, it kind of it kind of was inevitable for me to to end up DJing to become you know becoming a DJ because the music was always there. It was just always right. there. All right, so I'm gonna I'm end it with uh, <clears throat> Bobby Sumter last question, right? Because we, we got to respect the OG. No question. He said, what is your best song? Wow. And best singer. Well, I guess he's saying best artist. Best song and best artist. All time? All time. Michael Jackson, no question. No question. Song? Anything by anything by Michael Jackson? Oh, yeah. mm, the best Michael Jackson song. That's tough too. That's tough. But yeah, Michael Jackson is definitely my all time favorite um artist. artist. Best song. Best song. We don't gotta be a Michael Jackson song, but best song. Best song. That's tough, man. And you're a DJ too. That's a yeah, that's, 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 that's a hard question for a DJ. That, Damn. I, Damn, I, <laughs> damn, best song of all time. Wow. Ooh, that's tough. That is tough. Um, it's so many. There's so many. Just pick one. Pick one of your favorites. <laughs> uh, well, right now I'm gonna tell you what, my right now my my favorite song right now, and people on Instagram know this too because I play this record all the time on my on my little feeds and all that, and my little you know what I'm saying, my little joints or whatever, my little reels and all that. But it's a song called Full Circle on the, on the new Nas album. That is got like you, got you, got you. That is that is like my favorite joint right now. You know what I'm saying? That record is just it's a dope ass record. You know what I'm saying? Like that record is Bobby just Bobby Hunter said Axis Woman. Yo, this guy is like a real comedian for real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. he catches me off guard and I feel like damn he's joking, right? Like but <laughs> salute to you, Bobby. Salute to you. Um <laughs> yo, let me tell you this too. The first time we used the Jeopardy sound effects on the show and the cheering special effects. I knew I wanted to do it, and I got to do it with you tonight, bro my brother. It turned out well, because I know when my guy turn around, it's something good I'm doing, no right? Question. Whenever my no guy, because he stay focused on the art. Right. Whenever I do something and my guy turn around, I know it's a good thing. It, absolutely, absolutely. So. Yo, brother, I'm glad you came to the show, man. It's been an honor to kick it with you. I know you said it's been an honor to come to the show. Absolutely. I always feel like whoever comes on the show is definitely our honor to have you, man. So we, we cooked up something nice for you. Appreciate it. Well, and again and again, I appreciate I appreciate being, you know, being uh being on the show and being, you know, being uh a guest on your show and you know i salute you i'm going to continue to support the show i'm going to you That's know right. I'm going to let people i'm going to let people know about the show as well um you know you've already you know before me you've had a a, a whole host of incredible players you know that came out of our city and things of that nature so i you know yeah and let me tell you this too fam i'm in your hood doing my promo as i do you know throughout the summer in the parks and I see this guy walk by me, right? 6'3", height, right? Eye to eye. And in the back of my head, go, damn, he looks familiar. But Duke kept walking, right? So we go shoot our video. Hits me up later. Yo, yo, G, what's up? What's up? Yo, that was me walking, that walked past you. Right. I'm like, yo, mom, why did you say what's up? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, that, it's that New York tough, that New York toughness we got. Right. Sometimes we don't want to. You know, uh, I feel like we imposing on someone. Right. I'm telling you, if you guys, and it happened this weekend, I was at uh, Rucker, the 155th. Mm -hmm. One of uh, the people that watch me all the time, her name is Bree. I, I never met her before. I know she comes on the show, and she supports basketball head a lot. 
Right. She's a sports mom. Okay. So I'm up at 155th and Rucker doing my thing watching the girls play. She hits me up. Was you at 155th today? Oh, I knew that was you. I should have said something. You know what I'm saying? No but I saw my guy, K. Pennell, and he walked right up to me. He was like, yo, what's up, my brother? Nice to meet you. I'm K. Pennell. So right. salute my guy, man. Salute. Salute K. Pennell. That's dope. That's absolutely That's dope. That's right, yeah. man. Whenever you, see the, yo, whenever you see me, say salute. Say what's Definitely. up, basketball heads. I, I hear people saying it in the car all the time. Basketball heads, whatever. So I love the love. No, nah, this is it. Like I said, this is an awesome platform. Um, you know, you already, you know, as I said, you already had some amazing players on this. You know, on this is a this is a podcast. You know, what I'm saying contrary to, you know, yeah. I, 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 I would call it a show, right? Because we don't have any headphones, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll do some of that later on, right? right. I'm not worried about right. that. But right. like everybody, just into the podcast thing, and I'm saying. That's cool. Y'all can have that lane. And I'll have that being a part of my show as well. Right. But this is a basketball show. This is the home of New York City basketball. No question. Fact. No question. That's an absolute fact. Um, you know, like I said, I'm gonna continue to support you, my brother. Thank you, brother. Uh, it's, a, it's a it's an amazing, amazing platform. Um and and it's it's dope because you know, guys are able to share their story. Like, I, you know, we talked about this, Glenn. When you had Rod on here, you know, I was like, so, like, I felt like a fan, B. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you had Rod on here. I was like, oh, I'm tuned in. Like, I'm definitely, and you, I think you saw some of my comments and all of that. Like, that, like, this is, this is an amazing platform that I definitely will continue to support you and, and promote it. You know what I mean? I think this is an awesome platform. And, Thank and you, Mark. even even for the guys, you know, like myself, or you know, there's so there was so there's so many there was so many guys that work in our city playing ball. You know what I mean? And it, yeah. you know, this is just this is just an awesome platform, and I think that is needed, and I think it's dope for the youth as well. You know, so that they so that they can be in tune with the history, the the incredible history. That New York City basketball created in like is just is just is unmatched. I appreciate you, brother. So now I'm gonna show you your picture. Again, okay. I never see the picture until the end. So this is what we're gonna do, right? Y'all ready, ready, ready? Wow, that's dope, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that's you, that's you sitting in your crib with the Riverside jacket on. Riverside with the Riverside jacket, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, man. Wow, that's so dope. That's dope. And if this, this is the back of your uh your computer, your DJ set. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Dope. That's dope. And right. we, we ain't put the album sound. We put this, right? Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. So dope, man. That's dope. I hate that, man. You immortalized, man. I'm on it. I'm on it right now. That is so dope. That's dope. I'm on it. I'm on it, man. I feel honest, man. I feel honest, man. That's what's up, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate right, that. Right, right. Hey, listen, man. We're going to kick it, man. Let's keep those phone lines open. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? And, and last thing before you leave, who would you like to nominate to be on the show? Um. Well, you say you got... You Got T. Rincher next the next show. That's dope. Yeah. Um, got uh, Terrence Rincher. I got Glenn Daniels coming on next week, and someone else. I guess you gotta check my schedule. How many? How many people could I nominate? You can nominate as many as you want, fam. Uh, all your connections. Reach out to all your all your people. Let them know they need to be on basketball heads. Um. Definitely, definitely, definitely my brother Derek Phelps. 
um, Rob. Yeah, Phelps. so that I reached out to him and we talked already, so that will be a stamp of approval. Appreciate um, that. Rob Phelps. Uh, uh, Rob Phelps. I got Rob Phelps already. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna reach. I'm gonna reach out. <laughs> I'm going to reach out to my guy, to my guy, my guy, David Sweden. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. David Sweden. Um, my man, Kubi, who was in the chat. Kubi was tough. Kubi was a tough, a, a tough player. Um, I'm going to reach out to him. You know, he got stories. Um, I'm, you know, that, though, though, that's who I nominate right there. That, that, that's, that's dope, man. Listen, yeah. hey, Mark. Let's do this again, man, real Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Definitely holler at you. Definitely. Appreciate you. Appreciate Why everybody you. show some love to my guy, DJ Mighty Mark. Appreciate oh, everybody. You know. Appreciate everybody. Appreciate That's you. That's right. We're going to do it again. Show some love. We're going to do it That's again. That's right. We're going to do it again very soon. That's right, my guy. Salute. Right. Salute, my bro. All right. All right. Peace. Peace. Who knew? Right? You get like popular DJ and he go, yo, you know, I play ball too. Right? Yeah, I played for Hayes. I played with Jamal Masper and I was on that team. Here's my uniform. This is what the brotherhood is about. Right? And I tell my guys, when you think your story is not important enough, check out Basketball Heads and let us know. We want to hear it. Everybody has a story. Do you? Peace.